Hey, Jenny. Where's the sazon? I was going to make arroz con pollo. We were supposed to make dinner together before we go out to all the costume parties. Don't you remember? I already had a bad day at school, and now I can't make the goddamn chicken because you forgot the sazon. Oh, yeah. School. Let me tell you what happened. So I got up really early this morning, and you know I never wake up early. But I got this hypoallergenic face paint, you know, that expensive shit. And I try to make the star just right under my eye. And these stripes. You know how hard it is to get stripes on your face? Your nose gets in the way. <laughs> Hell yeah, I went to school like this. It's Halloween. You can be anything you want. Today, I just wanted to be inside out. Put my inside on the outside. So I went to school, and there was this girl. I swear to God, she copied me because she had on this Puerto Rican flag bandana and these big gold hoop earrings with her name in them. Yeah, you know the ones. Her name? Her name was, uh, Puta. Because she was a bitch. A puta. You know what I called her? Because she was like, Mira, look at Nicole. I guess everybody trying to be somebody they not today. You ain't no Puerto Rican. I bet you eat white rice every night. You don't know nothing about that yellow rice and gondolas. I bet if I spoke Spanish to you, you ain't gonna understand shit. Last name like that? Eyes like that? You must be Filipino. You ain't no Puerto Rican. Nah, no, I didn't hit her. I wanted to hit her. I should have said something. You would have said something, right? You gotta let me paint your face. It's people like her we gotta stand up to. We gotta represent. Just let me paint your face. I got it. We should have a mixed kid day parade. We'll build all the floats, we'll gather up all the mixed kids, and you and I will stand on the top of the float just waving everybody just like this. No one will ever ask us who we are anymore. You don't even have to wear the whole Puerto Rican flag on your face. I'll put a little Singapore right here, a little Puerto Rico over here, a little Ireland right here. It'll be the best fucking parade ever. We gotta test it out tonight. Just let me paint your face. You don't wanna paint your face with me? You don't wanna paint your face with me? You're right. You're so fucking right. I don't need any of this makeup. I already know who I am. I don't need anyone to tell me. wrote this after I ran out of Brooklyn Hospital, after I fainted after a performance. There's no urgency in the emergency ward. Brooklyn Hospital must get no awards. There's no urgency in the emergency ward. Brooklyn Hospital must get no awards. Call it a medical practice. Use human beings for practice. Are all the doctors stuck in traffic? Play pin the tail on the donkey. I got a permanent pain in my ass. Just make me your voodoo doll. I never felt more stuck in a place full of incompetent witch doctors. Which doctor knows what's going on here? Attention, all patients, be patient, be it paper cut or decapitated, we all get not treated equal. Patience is a virtue, but you could die in a waiting room. Numb nurses don't give a damn about saving you. I am not confident Brooklyn Hospital could stitch up any wound. Hell no, I ain't staying the night. I won't play the fool. Now we're gonna take you for a CT scan. Oh, really? I hope you remembered to plug it in. Because this whole night's been nothing but incompetence. Stick me with IVs wrong, blood spewing everywhere. Stick me six more times for blood work. Got me questioning, are you sure you work here? No doubt in my mind I had to get out of there. I injected my insulin to get back to normal. No questions asked. They tried to stick me with an IV to push my sugars even lower. If I hadn't been awake to stop her, I wouldn't have been awake. Stop heart. 
The angels and ancestors and family at Coda Cafe saved me with holistic care, showed me that my heart is here. Blood type poetry, soul set on a sunset, brighter day and a better me. I live to inspire the best of we. Never take your house for granted and thank God for my family tree. Pour it all out for the ancestors who answered me eight hours later. Test results read. High on life and poetry. I believe in this art because it was a room full of poets, not doctors, who saved me. Read this one for Phil because he's like my adopted grandfather. <laughs> I want to be like my grandfather. He has been journaling every day of his life since he could write. He's 90 now, still writing. He saw the world by a ship, brought back artifacts and languages, butterflies and dreams. He's 90 now. He watched countless hours of cooking shows to feed his family so they were full, made his own recipes, still creates new ones. He's 90. He drank before, he smoked before, he gave it up, he survived cancer twice. One day we were watching Mythbusters. He made me turn the channel, they were blowing up cars on purpose. He said they shouldn't teach people how to do bad things. That's why we have so many criminals in the world, because we're teaching the wrong things. We should teach people how to help people, not hurt them. He helped raise all nine grandchildren, is teaching me to keep watch on four burners, one broiler, and one oven simultaneously because he never knows how to cook for one when his heart has the capacity to cook for eight or more. He watches Wheel of Fortune and tries to guess the answers. His eyes are bad, his hearing impaired, his sense of smell is lost, but his heart is full. Still knows a good dish and a bad one when he tastes it, he's 90. If you're sick in the hospital, his first instinct is to take the subway, bus, or car to see you. And doesn't matter that his legs hurt or his cancer scars hurt, he'll still be there. He'll make your favorite dish all the time because he committed it to memory that first time you said you loved it. And he wants you to know that he loves you. He jots down everyone's birthday on his calendar along with doctor's appointments, health and family first always. A good rice pot and a good coffee pot is all he needs to make him happy. Why make life more complicated and cluttered than it needs to be? I want to be like my grandfather. There is no bigger heart than his. Perhaps the full weight of it is the real reason he shuffles his feet nowadays. He's 90. And I have come to the realization that the real reason I'm not married yet or on my way to the altar is because I've yet to find a man that comes close to him that knows the simplest loving gestures like the daily routine of making dinner speak volumes about how much you love a person. I want to be like my grandfather because I want to teach people to do the right thing like he taught me. Two new pieces. Um, I was really influenced by Amiri Baraka, so I wrote this for him. If postmen can deliver messages in the snow, then so can poets. Last night, I scribbled your babble across my breast and hooted like a ferocious night owl. Hoo, 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 hoo! Gonna tell me I can't grow old with poetry. That I ought to slow down, sit down, quiet my thoughts in a time where mindless acts are being put on a pedestal. Who gonna make me unbreak the rules, unbridge the gaps, unbe myself? I'd much rather unhinge my mouth, think before I speak these words, your spoken words, your spoken words. Human, you wrote pop-up books. No 3D glasses necessary. Your words peeled off the page and crashed against my shores in a time when I was unsure about my own words. Living with diabetes, we both could never afford to sugarcoat the truth. No matter how much America tried to inject it into our bloodstreams, when you couldn't origami yourself into haikus, you wrote lokus. Words 
fluid as liquid. No format could contain you. You read from books and captivated packed houses without apology, with a message for the masses and flicks of jazz. Choreography ain't everything, but what you say and how you live your life is. When you see a true poet laureate, the law reacts indefinitely. In your body of work, you spoke volumes to me and always will. May the rest follow your peace. Amiri Baraka, thank you for showing me how. Um, so I just moved and I've had a lot of handyman come in and out of the apartment. And so I just started writing erotic <laughs> stuff. <laughs> he came to my door with five words. Where do you want it? I gave him four more. Put it right here. Quick with his fingers, I asked if I could be his next hands-on project. I caught him looking at my blueprints, telling me this is going to be a tight squeeze. <laughs> That's okay, I like tight squeezes. We could fit better than we fit, but you don't know me, and I don't know you, but you're a handyman, so we both know what a good screw looks like. <laughs> I can fix that for you too if you want me to. I said I do. I don't need you to put a ring on it, but I, can I get your number so I can call you again when I want to fuck something? I mean, fix something. Fix something. Can you show me how to slide it in again? I mean, I just want to understand. Sure, as many times as you want me to, till it's perfect just for you. Then he left with a smile, and I said, you have a nice day too. <laughs>